This is Mr. Kerbis and Miss Celia, and we are going to show you how to do some, uh, yeah, some one variable statistics and analysis on some discrete data using the HP Prime graphing calculator. So, what do we got here? Some nice easy numbers just to demonstrate uh, how it works, and how are we going to get those numbers into our calculator? Well, first we need to go into the apps and choose because we're only looking at one set of data. We're looking at one variable stats. Okay, so one, 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 two, three, three, four, two fives? That's right, and six and eight. Excellent. Okay, and if we want to find the mean, median, and mode, where is it that we go here? Well, it's different for each of those, but let's start with going to statistics where it tells us some useful information. This one here? Yep, that's right. Okay. Oh, that's good. We get a few things out of that, but I don't see the word mean anywhere. No, so we need to recognize that where it's got the X with the bar on top, that is meaning the mean X value. This here. Yep. Okay. Good. So that is 3.54545. Should I write all those digits? Um, you can, but it's going to take you a long time, and that's a, the calculator is actually rounding. But if we stick with um, three significant figures, but we've, I think we've got a bit of a typo there. I think I've, I've got it wrong already. There we go. That's the ones that keep repeating, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. And median? And that's written as med on the calculator, which is three. Okay. Excellent. And when we look at this data, those numbers measure the central tendency of the data. And what is the calculator actually doing when it finds the median? So when it's finding the median, it's taking the middle number of the data. So if we've got a, um, a data set, it's literally the one that occurs in the middle of that data when it's in order. And that's key. Okay. Are they always going to get such nice ordered data? It's not. And so sometimes if you're trying to find the median manually, you'll have to sort your um, data set into ascending order. Okay. And mean, how has the calculator come up with 3.545454. What is it done? So uh, you might have seen this called the average in, um, earlier on in school. So you're adding up all those sets of that um, set of data, adding up every single value, and then dividing by the number of um, pieces of data that you have. And in Canada, we all we would use average in North America as well. But in Britain, you tend to call all of these averages, don't you? They are, yeah. Um, mode. Mode is not on the calculator. I think the calculator is assuming that that's um, easy enough for us to see. So we're looking at the one that comes the most frequently in the data set. So I think that would be one here. Excellent. Very good. So um, what else can we do with this calculator? Well, if you scroll down, there's a lot more information that, that's on there, but we're not going to use all of it today. But you'll notice something called Q1 and Q3 min and max. And those pe um, pieces of information, they're part of the five-point summary, which is really useful for making box plots. So I we're like gonna box plots. Yeah. All right, so minimum is one. Lower quartile is? That's one as well. So on the calculator, it's recorded as Q1, as in the first quartile. Median we found before. And... And our upper quartile, again, is Q3. It's and maximum. Yep. Okay. So as we've got that, what your calculator is doing, here's your median number. That leaves this bottom half of the data. And if you take the median of that, you get the 1. And if you look on the other side, with these numbers, and you take the median of those numbers, then you will see the upper quartile. So the calculator can do dumb things really fast. And the nice thing with the, the using the calculator is you don't actually have to put them in order then. Whereas if you were doing it manually, you'd have to sort them out into order first. Super. So next, uh, what else can we find here? Well, we could actually use that information to um, create a box plot, but your calculator can as well. 
So I think if we go into single, oh, we might have to press the OK button first. And at the moment we're set down to do a histogram, but we're going to change that to box plot. Okay. Or box whisker, is what it's called on here. Mm -hmm. And then we can go and plot. And oh, that's cool. A nice little box plot using that information. Now, it's not your standard box whisker plot here, is it? Because it's only got one whisker. Why is that? The minimum and the lower quartile are the same. So it has no whisker at this lower end. Is there a way that we can zoom in there? I'm not having much... Uh, I'm a bit older, you know, I can't see <laughs> see that so well. You can zoom in. Um, if you're using your um, the regular calculator, you could just do the um, the pinching on the screen, and we should be able to zoom out a bit. Or you can change the, the window, as you're doing now. Oops. I need to be in here, right? For our X, we want to change it. And I'm going to go to 10. Let's see if that gives us something more interesting. And plot. That looks better. And if we want to make it look, well, these guys are lucky because they can just pinch right on the screen. Exactly. Hey? Brilliant. Okay. Great. So that gives us our box whisker plot. Oh, I thought it was going to let me drag it right over. And what is important, if you're drawing it, never ever draw this line through the middle of the box. They get they, they don't like that very much. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And also if you were drawing it um, on in your head, you would of course use a ruler as well. Absolutely. And if you see the command term draw, you will not get full points for this. Your teacher will only give you half marks. Okay, so we could draw a box plot. So that's one set of um, way to represent the information. We can also look at um, a histogram as well. So if we go and change our, go back to single and change it to a histogram, which is the first on the list. And we plot that. Wow. So what's this show us? Well, this uh, shows us the spread of the data as well. So it, it shows us the frequency for each um, number in the data set. So and you can see that there's three occurrences of the one. Mm -hmm. So it's a good visual of how it's um, how the data is spread. So if the student is uh, taking this down and wants full points, and this we will have a criteria CD, um, it would be a good idea to do it the way I did it. Oh, I don't know where it went now. With that box plot. Uh, a box plot is good for um, representing data because you can talk about um, the quartiles of the information. So if we're looking at the median point, we can see that half of that data is um, under three or under. Let's see if I can get a screenshot out of this. Some ah, screen capture. There we go. And then copy. Is it going to let me put it in here? No, Doesn't weird. So. Oh well, <laughs> but in your in your project you could do this, and then the other thing that you would want to think about, you could you could dump that into a Word document or something. But after the only thing to make sure is you label the values of these. So it's discrete data, which means um, is this going to let me do it? Probably not. Let's do it like that. So here I would have one, two, three, and this axis is called the frequency and because it's discrete data technically those don't really need to be touching but since they are we're going to label the numbers underneath so that was a one a two a three a four a five a six and an eight now the thing about the data that we've been given here it didn't actually tell us what the data was about but typically we, w we would want to tell the reader what um, our information is talking about so we would have something on our bottom axis labeling that as well what could this be the data of? It could perhaps be the number of goals scored. Okay. So yeah. this is the number of goals scored by Miss Senior. She's a very good soccer player. One time she even got eight goals. That was a good game for you. But, and you'll notice I never ever scored zero. <laughs> 
Um, so uh, anything else that we should show the students on the HP Prime today, or should we, should we call it a day there? I think that's a good start for us, yeah. Okay.